So I'm not a big believer in blind dates. Uh, me neither. And even though a work colleague swore I'd like her. My sister promised I'd like him. Still. We were skeptical. That is, until. I saw her. And I saw him. So attracted to you. Something just clicked. We started talking. And we I'm couldn't so stop talking the whole night. <laughs> Closed down the restaurant. Then we went and got drinks. And then he's such a gentleman. He walked me home. Well, almost. Right, because on this dark street, these two huge thugs with brass so knuckles. And nunchucks. And really bad skin. They grabbed me, said that they wanted our money and were going to rape me. We want your money and we're going to rape you. It was horrible. Well, they could have been. Right. If Barry hadn't vowed to protect New York City streets since being orphaned as a boy. Yeah, I'm the trust funded Avenger. Is he ever? Barry learned tie stick fighting on the rough streets of Princeton. He was so calm and strong. I had never seen a throwing star. Lucky for them, I was with a beautiful lady. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been so nice. Yeah. And after seeing the almost tender way he vanquished those ruffians. I am quite compassionate. I knew right then. It was time. Time for me to take her virginity. I thought I would be scared, but thankfully, prior to me, Barry had made love to more than 80 women. 83, which is a lot. I felt like I was made of light, a sexual firefly or something hot, throbbing, fetishistic climaxes again and again and again. And the next morning after we won 38 million plain nickel slots. I started traveling the world and haven't stopped since. But Charlie, that's us, yo. What about you? I haven't seen you since, I don't know, high school? What's going on? Tell us about your lucky lady. You've got one of those, right? Yeah, what's going on with you? Ever notice that when you're not in a relationship, everyone else is in a ridiculously happy one? Seriously? Unbelievable. I mean, this guy, these two, it's not like this shit ever works out for me. Charlie, I've called you 10 times a day for the past two weeks. She doesn't like you, dude. Now help me find this boomerang before your mom makes us do geometry. I mean, was it my fault? Who puts a heart around no if she doesn't mean yes? Come on. In college, it was even worse. Look, all I'm saying is next time, don't leave me there by myself while you go talk to frat guys all night, okay? Charlie, you're the one who told me to go flirt for free beer, remember? Yeah, well, you didn't have to like it so much. Charlie! So that's how to avoid failing the final exam. Christ, you name the relationship. I'll tell you where it went wrong. That dog was such a buzzkill. Let's just say we're both happy it ended, like how all my relationships ended. Happy. Well, until Angela. You have got to be kidding me. <clears throat> Angela, I'm sorry that I woke you up. You used to like middle of the night sex. I mean, you are white hot. Basically naked in my bed. You practically groped me. With my knee while sleeping. <clears throat> Shit, do you see it anywhere? <sighs> Hey, it's gonna be all right, okay? I told you to shut that window. Blood-sucking mosquito's never gonna let me sleep. Honey. I'm already really nervous for my meeting. Hey, honey, <laughs> honey, honey. Listen, you know tomorrow's gonna go great. Mm. And I promise you, even if I have to stay up all night to do it, you, you can sleep the entire time. That mosquito's teeny tiny little life will end. And ever since Angela and I broke up, I just can't stop thinking. Don't just kill it, torture it, pump it for information. Find out where those insect sleeper cells live. I'm gonna waterboard the shit out of that mosquito. Good. And I don't care what the mainstream liberal media has to say about it. Mm -hmm. Little fucker deserves it. <laughs> I love you. Mm. You promise that mosquito dies after? A lot of mosquitoes are so last year. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Oh.
And even though Angela and I are finished, why just doesn't make sense. I mean, wouldn't it have been simpler for us if we just did the things in our relationship that our grandparents did in theirs? They never split up. Hell, even our parents' generation did enough to at least fake out the kids pre-divorce. And while I know pretending's no surefire cure-all, it sure as shit beats reality. Te juro que entre. Tu hermano yo no hay más. Que yo más tarde. Estás loca. Yo no tengo un hermano. Entonces estoy loca. No te odio. I don't know. I wish just once I had a clue what to do. And I mean, I just can't get out of my head. That's the thing. My brain just keeps playing and replaying and replaying. Why did the relationship end? How can I get over her? And I, I don't know. So no change then. I really, really tried to make it work, Charlie. But you just didn't live here. You were in another world. What about the daydreams and sex fantasies? Are you still having those? No. Look, I know you believe that other couples are truly happy, but the truth is, they aren't. Nobody's happy, unless they're single and don't have to make compromises, relationship compromises that frankly suck for everyone. Hell, <laughs> even single people only think they're happy, but they really aren't. They hate their parents, they hate their jobs, and their goddamn fantasy football teams. Whatever they can come up with to keep themselves miserable. Miserable, Charlie, is what people are meant to be. Do you mind if I smoke? Like, but I wish you could hear half of the incessant whining that goes on in this room. <laughs> you people are relentless. <laughs> Although, my cat skills cabin does say Thank you. Well, then sign me up for six more years of these sessions right now, can we? <laughs> Charlie, you pose a very good question. Very good about our sessions. Charlie, we need to talk. I've wanted to bring this up for a long time. But with your birthday and the summer holidays and that layoff situation you've been dealing with, I didn't think it was the right time. But you know, when is it really the right time? Charlie, what I'm saying is, I think it would be good for us to take a little time off. It's August, right? You're probably headed to wherever that massive therapist rave is, wherever you guys go this time of year. Just give me the dates. That's fine. No, that's, that's not it. Charlie, look, I need to stop seeing you because it's time for me to start seeing other people. Oh, is, is it something I said? No, it's, it's not you, Charlie. It, it, it's me. You know, you saying that really does bring up a lot of feelings for me. I... Shit, I really got to take this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna need some more of this stuff. I don't know where the hell you got this shit, but it's spectacular. again and again and again. <laughs> There's no question Franco made a great play. I mean, just catching the ball at your feet is tough enough, let alone one sailing end over end, then to dance down the sideline, even throwing a little bit of a stiff arm. Yeah, it was incredible. 
But still, it's not the same thing. Now, baseball, on the other hand. Now that is a game of matchups. That is a game of intent. You can't get lucky and hit a 98 mile an hour fastball. You can't get lucky and throw a sweeping curveball nailing the outside corner of the plate. I mean, what's better than two outs, bottom of the ninth, three two count, a runner on second and down by a run. The pitch Dennis Eckersley intends to throw and the swing Kirk Gibson intends to put on the ball. One pitch, one swing, a World Series winner and a World Series loser. I mean, it's insane. But listen to me, rambling on, while talking. Talking is exactly what we don't need me to be doing, now do we? You, my friend, need to be watching further examples of baseball superiority to every other sport in the world, while I, I need to, well, you'll figure out the rest. Well, that's some kind of athleticism, wouldn't you say, Kenny? An all-star caliber move, no question about it. So smooth. Makes the tough play look easy time and time again. What is that noise? ensure that your seat backs are in upright position, your tabletops are stowed, and that you have avoided our $1,000 check bag fee by placing absolutely everything you own in the overhead bins above. If you are seated in the middle seat, this does entitle you the use of both armrests, regardless of whether the stupid fucker sitting next to you has any idea of airplane etiquette whatsoever. After takeoff, you will be permitted to use the iPhone, but prior to that time, even the single use of an iPhone will cause the plane to crash, resulting in your eternal damnation straight to hell. Welcome aboard. Ouch. Whoopsies. <laughs> wow, may I be of some assistance to you? Yeah, that, mm. that'd be great. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to give this to you, little Prezi, and I will take this, and you can pick it up at gate check on your way out when we land in New York. No, no, it's a really small bag. There has yes. to be some room on board for it. Hmm. Poor, poor dear. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do for you. Come see me as you're exiting the aircraft and I will credit you with quadruple miles for today's flight that you will never be able to redeem. Hmm? Buckle up. <laughs> this is me. <sighs> you just got totally hosed. I know, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Half the bags on this flight are bigger than that. Seriously, I thought it was bad enough getting the full Monty going through the x-ray search. Oh, that's nothing. You see that old lady over there? She practically begged for the thumb treatment. She's such a terrorist. <laughs> Look at her. Don't let that fool you. Such a terrorist. <laughs> oh. Online dating, huh? Oh, you saw that, did you? Hey, I'm not judging. Actually, you know what? You want to give me a hand? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yes, I do. OK. <laughs> date or no date? Well, how about, oh. Sally. She's 28. Sally. She enjoys the emasculation of men, throwing up after meals, and long walks on the beach. Date. Yeah? Definitely. Yeah, she had made emasculation. Oh, wow, you're a natural at this. Okay, Gretchen. She's 30. Ooh, she enjoys Gretchen. lying about her age, being sensitive, smart, and funny, mm -hmm. and only posting one picture that was taken 12 to 15 years ago. Yeah. Without question, she will look that good in person. Mm -hmm. Without question. Take her out tonight. Tonight? Yeah, oh, don't even what? wait a minute. Actually, I already have plans tonight, and she's out on work release, so... It'll be pretty hard to reschedule. It's too bad. She is really a keeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you from the city? Yeah, uh, just coming back from visiting my sister. Mm. You? Yep, New York interview. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, uh, I've been thinking about making a switch to the nonprofit sector for a while. You know, uh -huh. actually do some good at work. I wish I was doing that. I figure you look for a new job now or Wait till I'm 60 and announce my retirement in conference room D, having never surpassed my greatest achievement, which was writing the jingle for the stroller with the built-in ashtray. Don't let motherhood slow you down. Babies take and take, but it's your turn now. So keep on rolling in the smoking stroller. That jingle is pretty catchy. Oh yeah, it's catchy like the clap. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Could we no, get no, two no. more aviations and soda, please? Mm. Can I just tell you? how happy I am for once to be sitting next to the hot chick. 
I never sit next to the hot chick on the flight. I mean, the elderly constantly, the extraordinarily sweaty, really hot guys yeah. <laughs> all the time. But you, mm, I win. I won. I won. So forgive me, but I need to take this once in a lifetime opportunity and try to uh, convert this into, say, a date. Maybe. Outside of the pressurized chamber we sit in. <laughs> I'm Angela, by the way. Charlie. Hmm. Really pleased to meet you, Charlie. You too. I don't have the clout. Now, I'm gonna turn over the next car, Tammy, and I want you to concentrate and tell me what it is, okay? And remember, there are no wrong answers here, so you just tell me what you think it is as soon as I flip it over, okay? That's the dead puppy doggy. Okay, well, you don't, have, you, know, you don't have to answer right away, okay? You can take a little time to think and be sure about what you see. Do you understand? Uh-huh. All right, now, Tammy, you just give it a little That's thing. That's the dead puppy doggy that could kind of open by an eye. Well, like we said, there are no wrong answers here, so let's just, let's just try another one. That's Mommy and Daddy. Okay, good. Mommy and Daddy, that's great, Tammy. Mommy's cooking for Daddy. All right, see, that's a really nice thing for Mommy. Mommy's putting smashed up glass in Daddy's suit to make him cry. For Mommy to do. Dr. Donovan, Charles Carroll's online, too. Dude. I am having the best day, and I just had to share. Great, man. What's going on? I am the proud owner of a brand new date next Tuesday night. But a woman? How'd you pull that at 11.30 in the morning? You've been drinking? It is never too early for the nectar of love, my friend. And don't get all weird on me, but this Angela chick, she could be the one. Oh, man, you don't know this chick. Oh, come on, man. I'm happy. Leave me alone. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. You know how you get it. Oh, gee, thanks, Oprah. Hey, can I come on your show? Because I'm having this problem with my best friend. First of all, my man, you ever watch Oprah? Because maybe you should. Oprah knows her shit, my man. Second, what, what do you even know about this chick that makes you think she could be the one? I know enough. Really? Yeah. Tell me, is she a Yankee fan or Mets? Do you like Belgian beer like yours? She have to keep things gluten-free. Does she actually laugh at Groundhog Day? Or she just wonder why the fuck Bill Murray keeps trying to kill himself? You don't make any sense. The most important things to know, they are not but relevant the one assessment material, you might say. I'm just saying. Take in a little bit more data before you fucking propose. All right, all right. She could turn out to be a serial killer. Trust me when I say this. They come from places you would never suspect. I have no idea what that means. Well, look, man, it's cool. It's cool about the date, and it's cool about teeing her up on a sea night. Tim, man. A sea night? What are you talking about, sea night? We're going out Tuesday. Exactly, Tuesday night. Nothing too serious. Just want to have a little fun, not wasting an A or B night. Strong work. You know, she did suggest Tuesday. I kind of just went along with it. You still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I gotta get back to little Jeffrey Dahmer here, but uh, just try to th keep things in perspective, okay? Okay, okay, fine. Be gone with you. Oh, and by the way, she's the one. <laughs> ah, well, she's not the one. She's definitely not the one. Angela's ancient history. Do we gotta keep talking about it? Your incessant whining is driving me fucking crazy. Angela, aside for a minute, what kind of therapist drops someone as fucked up as you? Huh, oh, well. It's not all that bad. He said we could still be friends, so. Well, tell you what, take the cash you were giving, doctor. Don't call me, I'll call you and put it towards full body massages twice a week. Then you see how many problems you still have. Yeah, I don't really see how it could help me find Mrs. Wright, oh, but yeah. uh, sure. Woo! Dude, come on. You can't do that. What? Because I'm not cute and cuddly, me taking a leak somehow defiles the dog piss glazed pavement we've been running on since 72nd Street? Yeah. Come on, man. The process is the size of a fucking honeydew. You see? Oh, for crying out loud, lady, you're carrying a bag of shit, huh? You need to quit your crying. It's not like you couldn't see this coming. What? What? Hey. Oh, don't come here. Okay. Huh? Huh? Hmm? All right. Is that why we are fighting? Or is it because of Britain? Hey there, fly girl. I got your text. Charlie! <laughs> oh my 
my god, you have to do a shot. These Irish car bombs, they're so good. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm good. Dad! Shuffle around! Yeah, maybe just one more, though, because Anne and I were going to go. You know what I mean? Tell me, can you see? Oh, oh. oh my god. Whoa! Oh, yeah, Daisy Angela, that's a ride. <laughs> Come on. Come on, it's okay. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah. Hey, maybe we should get her to bed, huh? <laughs> You guys are a bunch of <laughs> fucking amateurs. Woo! That was fun. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let me just. I am not. Okay, you want to split? And then, you know, whoever he is seems to be able to handle it. I bet. To the extent that either of you are worried, I'll be leaving momentarily. No, Charlie. What? See? No, I can't. She's fine. So let's go dress up oh. like robots and sniff each other's panties. <laughs> Eat, eat, eat. Morning, morning. Remember that? You're not going to let her sleep in all those clothes, are you? Yeah? I think he's gay. Hey. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your phone is right by your bed here. I pre-dialed 911, so if you get into any trouble during the night, all you have to do is push the green button. Oh. Okay. okay? So, as long as you can <clears throat> make it through the night without the use of paramedic care, <clears throat> which if practice makes perfect, I don't think you'll have a problem with. <laughs> Got a glass of water and some stuff for your head right next to your phone. Mm. Beyond that, I gotta go. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I just, I really like you. I do. You're a good guy. <laughs> oh, God. I'm a mess right now. Look at me. You'd probably hate me. I don't hate you. I would hate me. <laughs> oh, fuck. Please, just promise me that you'll go out with me again. Please, no drinking. We'll go see a movie, it'll be so fun. What about Friday? Are you free? Ah, uh, I was thinking Monday. Just kidding. <laughs> Whenever you want. <laughs> Whenever, it'll be so fun. Huh? Yay! <laughs> There's something else, you know that? I know. So, why not go out with me? What's the worst that can happen? You know, when Bryce asked me to be his best man, a lot of memories flashed through my mind. In fact, I can vividly remember the first time I ever saw Rebecca and Bryce together, huh? It was Red Lobster, Bryce's 29th birthday. Fucking all-you-can-eat popcorn shrimp. And I knew at that very moment I could see it in her eyes. Bryce should absolutely, under no circumstances, <laughs> marry this woman. But of course, I said nothing. And now, two and a half years later, here we are. To the happy uncouple. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, Vic. Thanks to all of you for being here to help celebrate this truly special day. It really does mean the world. You guys know Bryce is an asshole, right? you may have right? noticed that my wife, Rebecca, won't be joining us tonight. Oh. Yeah, but at least That's he's our asshole. I have divorced that cheating bitch effective today. Yeah! She does send her regards from the throes of hell. Plus, some of the shit some this asshole speaks, it's kind of it's fun to watch. Officially official, so let me go ahead and set a couple things straight. First, yes. These are real <laughs> and second. Yes, sexy ladies of New York City. All of you, not you. It's fucked up, but she's my cousin. She's my cousin, I'm fucking with you. But sexy ladies of New York City, I am totally fucking available to crush ass and or pussy anytime you want. <laughs> Divorce papers. Come on, take these divorce papers from Buddy Mac Dick. Take it from my dick. Mm. All right. Oh, that hurts good. All right, I'm 
gonna go. Still. No. Mm. Seriously though. Mm. I kind of, I don't know what it is, I just kind of don't even know where to start with all this. That's the thing. Well, I bet you don't, Charlie, all right? And that's I natural. Just, I didn't know how good I had it single until I got married. Never do that again. Right. No offense, no. buddy. Mm -hmm. Ron's a Ron character. No, listen, I understand that, that that sounds good, but I think it, I think it's too good to be true. Am I right? I have way more sex single than I ever had married. Come, really? Yes, and what's better than a fucking one night stand? Oh my there's God. no commitment. There's no, there's no annoying neediness or feelings. And when she spreads her legs free of obligation, <laughs> of commitment, of the need to give her half of what you own, you can't have fucking half of this, not without one of these, my friends. That free market pussy is gold. <laughs> gold, huh? A coveted commodity that appreciates in a down economy, you bet it's fucking gold. And you need to hoard as much of that gold as you can while the single man's liquidity proposition still exists, Jesus my friend. Christ. Forget about Angela. You realize the next time you're in a relationship, ain't no more upticks in the old portfolio, and cheap it is not. Trading out of the position, boom, crush ass. Wow, I understand that your business school outlook on getting pussy may be <laughs> a bit unique, but I don't know, I'm just fucked, man, after Angela. You're not fucked! I'm fucked! I don't even think I could crush anything right now. I don't even know where to start. Charlie, it's like candy from a baby. It goes like this. First, you gotta identify the target. No, not her. No, not even close. Boom, her. The one not over at the bar, and instead attacking that Blackberry with the same intense precision that'll come in handy for you in just a few short hours. There'll be some competition for her, but nothing you can't handle. And this chick is annoyed that Vanessa from up on the bar is getting all the attention, all right? So you give it to her. All the attention she needs. Okay, I'm buying, now what? Next, make sure she knows that you're a nice guy, okay? And this is important, so pay attention. You're a nice guy who she will never see again. That she'll never see again? I don't get it. Think back to college. Spring break, specifically. Nice girls let their sexual cats out of the bag all spring break long on South Padre Island because they know when they get home, it'll be right back to prim and proper, smart and respectable, without anyone around to say otherwise. But this is NYC, not spring break, right? Exactly! Which is why you're flying back to LA in the morning. Or you're fucking moving to Nepal on Tuesday, whatever. Whatever words go from your lips to her ears, letting her know that she will never see you again. And then just like spring break, the farther away she thinks you'll be next week, the more likely she is to do something really erotic back in the sack tonight. Okay, okay, listen. It's kind of unfair to know this stuff, but what's next? So then you establish touch and get her comfortable, not just with the look of it, but with the feel of you. Stand close to her, let her start to like it. And remember, part of the beauty of this chick is that she's not out with some fucking cock-blocking protector friend who couldn't get herself laid and now needs to pull a guilt trip on your girl. Cause she's normally the protector friend. Boom, now you're with me. And then fellas, close the deal. No hesitation, don't ask permission, just go over to the bartender, cash out your bill, tell her it's time to get her out of all these wet things. Wait for those easy BFFs of hers to pull their Irish goodbyes and go in for the kill. And under no circumstances should you ever, never, ever let her think. You might actually be the devil. <laughs> We're kind of brilliant in a, if in a Machiavellian sort of way, but thank you. Thank you guys for sharing. It's like Oprah says, for every one of us that succeeds, it's because there's somebody there to show you the way out.
Look, you know that I would love to be there, but I just... Don't want to come. Got it. No, no, I want to come. I cannot come. Angela's parents hate me as it is. If I blow off another dinner, it'll be World War III. You're being stupid. You love my debate parties. Yeah, I thought you missing a presidential debate was like a Brangelina baby not being adorable. Mm. <laughs> Seriously, you know Vince and I have been planning for weeks. I know. Oh, hey, check it out. It's her. God, I really recognize her. Why is she wearing her glasses? She got LASIK, okay? I don't see what's so hot about her in the first place. Yeah, I gotta go work hot on this one. Guys, she's like hot, hot. I admit, I kind of want to touch her hair, but she's no Alyssa from tech support. Uh, that's true, I'll do her in a second. Everyone would do Alyssa in tech support. In fact, they most of them have. So what? Are you okay? Charlie, is this a sexy librarian thing? Because really, even putting club clothes on a woman with that little makeup is not gonna get hot at a work hot. I don't know how many times I have to say this. Club clothes, unattractive. I mean, she's jeans and t-shirt. She doesn't need makeup. She's just as hot out of work as she is in it. Maybe hotter. Plus, she's really nice. She does seem nice. I bet she'd let her boyfriend come to my debate party. Oh my god. I don't know what Vince has been telling you, but while Angela and I might be in a bit of a rut right now, I don't need it from the peanut gallery. Okay? Oh, what about her? <laughs> Okay, so then she's fired. Oh, totally. She's gone. Who's next? <laughs> okay, only uh, 17 more to go. Andrew Feldman. Who? Is that that douchey old guy sits next to the copy room? No, you're thinking of Juliana. Andrew's the vomiter from last year's White Castle Eating Contest. Right, yes. Double stacker. Cool guy. All righty. Is White Castle guy the next one to get laid off? My sources say. No. Oh, man, that dog. Oh, no. I totally could have made that kid cry at his exit interview. All right, next. Oh, speak of the devil, Miss Juliana McCarthy. Come on down. This douchey old guy getting the boot. It is decidedly so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Um, in regards to Juliana, I realize from an efficiency perspective, the eight ball may be faster, but she's good with clients. And she's got kids. Do you want to do two out of three or something? Look, Charlie. Ch Charlie, uh, if it's not one douchey old guy with kids, it's going to be another one. And if we don't fire her today in this economy, we're going to do it tomorrow or next week. So I mean, it's not personal. It's just business. Even so, it feels like we're screwing people without considering the facts. Come on, guy. There's a lot of money to be made in screwing people without considering facts. Have you never made a health insurance claim? <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's supply and demand. Where right now, there is an oversupply in the system that needs to get flushed out. But hey, you know, if you really want to save this sorry sack's job, you can just offer up your own, my man. No reason why the name on top of that severance package can't change just like that. You're serious? Thank you so much for your question. Just a great, great question. And I understand your frustration. You see, my friends, it's this kind of political kowtowing to the special interests that causes good people, like my dear friend Linda Lafferty, a political pawn from Hawking, Ohio, to hate big spending earmarks with all her heart, especially those I might add, put forth by non-natural born American citizens. Bollocks, absolute bollocks. That accusation is preposterous, Governor, and I for one can't stand for it. Yeah, no shit. Oh, you're at the bar. Yeah, I need a drink. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh, the bus. What does that even mean? Is your folks hit traffic? May I remind you so? We're operating under rules you signed off on. I'm afraid I can't help but point out that I am the only one in this room wearing a flag pen. Come on, guys, enough already. With my allotted two minutes, so if you just give me that and be a gentleman, I would appreciate it. Charles, Charles, your shirt. Chuck! Jesus, Angela, it's been kind of a tough day. Yeah? So long a day that you forgot to wear the shirt that we talked about this morning that my mom gave you for your birthday? Oh, shit. Yeah, I have shit. Two and three and a bunch gentlemen, of that gentlemen, I please. That I in my... uh, another vodka tonic, sir? Uh, he will have a vodka soda, and I will have a martini. Dry. Angela, is this really necessary? I don't want to fight with you, Charles. I don't want to fight with you either. Bring it down. It just probably hasn't been the best day to have your parents talk at me. Hang in there tonight, okay? Great friend. 
great patriot. And if you can do me a favor, please don't get them started on politics. You, sir, are a douchebag. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That is not happening. That's such a shame, really. Uh, you limousine liberals with all your regulations. Oh. Dad, you know it's not like that. Oh, please, honey, it is just like that. I mean, first off, I have to hire all these unqualified affirmative action workers, and now, all of a sudden, I got a gay patrol up my ass with their rainbows telling me about getting married. What's that gonna cost my, my insurance rates these days? I'm already paying for maternity leave, aren't I? Well, don't, never mind the immigrants. Yeah. Do you know, just the other day, Margo Pendergrass told me that her nanny can swell up, or was it Alejandro? I don't know, one of those Mexican <laughs> names you cannot spell. <laughs> anyway, she actually asked for Mother's Day as a vacation day. Can you imagine Mother's Day? But sweetheart, this is what I'm talking about. They come to this country and, and they want it all. They want the American Poor dream. Why, why here do they want the American dream, in my question? What's you supposed to do on Mother's Day? Two toddlers and no nanny. Incroyable. Arriba, arriba. Escuchas gracias, señoritas y caballeros. That sounds like it right now. Oh, Everybody's against us rich folks nowadays. People like you, Charles, people with petty little equal rights problems. Wow. So then she's fired. What the fuck is that noise? We are operating under rules that you signed off on. Gentlemen, please. Can I ask you again, Charles? This is sexy. Are they vodka tonics, sir? My sources say. Do they ever? Yeah. There's a lot of money being screwed in people. Resulting in your total damnation. Straight to hell. Decidedly so. You can quit your bitch. It's not like you can't see this coming. Two dollars and no man. Hey, the main top that severance package can be changed just like that. I quit my job today. We do what? Well, not really quit. They offered me a layoff, and I took it. <laughs> Seriously. Some sort of joke? No. Well, Charles, um, why on earth would you do such a foolish thing? Oh, see, I, I don't think it's that foolish. I just thought, okay. isn't it better to stop lying to myself? Hmm. Like, this tastes like shit. Um, uh, ooh. Can we please get a bottle of vodka and a bottle of tonic? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, this guy. You know, it's kind of like what Oprah says about luck, isn't it? Uh, I got to say, you're really not making a whole lot of sense. No. What is he talking about? No, it's, it's perfect. It's when preparation meets opportunity. Right, honey? <laughs> you know, honey, I always knew there was something wrong with this guy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wrong with me. Whoa, whoa. There's nothing wrong with me. Oh. Or maybe there is something wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pretty good idea, Ron. Do you? Charles, stop. Sweetie, I think your parents are more than happy to sit here and smile while I talk at them. Yeah, I'm right back at you, pal. I'm sorry. <sighs> converse with them. We could all converse, right? About how oh, Margo's nanny wants to spend Mother's Day with her own kids. <laughs> you remember the nanny, right? She's the immigrant who pays taxes takes a job that Margot clearly doesn't want, namely raising Margot's kids. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, the balls on this guy. No, sir. Pal, let me okay. tell you something. You got a lot of nerve talking like that when you're a guest at my table. I'm sorry. Your table? Oh, I'm sorry. Charles, are you going to pay for a change? <laughs> really, Rob? Really, you'd, you'd allow me to do that? Because as right now, we're currently under the you pay status quo, which is a Truly great arrangement, by the way. You pay, and I could just sit here and listen to you talk about how gay people shouldn't have the right to get married. It's truly enlightening. Why stop there? Mm -hmm. I bet we can all get all the queers to sit in the back of the bus, drink their own water fountain. <laughs> uh or, hell, I bet we could get them to speak in their own governmentally mandated dialect. Well, okay, Charlie. I sure enough hope so. one day one gets me to be a house homosexual, because being a field homosexual just ain't no fun. Charles! Mom, Dad, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's gotten into him. My parents brought us to this lovely dinner. This is not the kind of treatment that anyone deserves. You're right. You're absolutely right. No one deserves to be treated this way.
That's why you folks will never have to deal with it again. There you go, Ron. Thank you, sweetheart, for everything. You know, for a while there, we we really were something. God, are you are you getting back out there? Are you dating? I haven't really put myself out there. It's just I did do the speed dating thing last week. Speed dating? Are are people still speed dating? People are still speed dating. Was it fun? Uh yeah, well, you get about a minute before you move on to the next person, yeah. right? So I thought just put yourself out there. Just go for it. That makes sense, yeah. Which was all fine until the first woman that I talked to, woman number her, woman number 24. 24. She was hard of Lucky hearing. Number 20. As in disability oh. and hard of hearing? Oh, you betcha. <laughs> and when my my whole opening line was about how I was excited to be there because I was finally having a chance to get away from my wife. Yeah. Which is funny, funny. Yeah. right? Yes, yes. She just meets me with a completely deadpan, what? <laughs> not, right, what because she can't hear me, not what because she's pissed at me, but no. at this point she'd said nothing about being hearing impaired, <laughs> and so I just thought she was annoyed, and oh. anyway. I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. No, it's it's not. Oh, it's God. Fine. She's still, she's still friending me on Facebook, so. Oh, well, good. At least yeah. there's that. That's so you know how to get in touch with her. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, Charlie, I know that it sucks out there. It does. But I just, I know that she's out there for you, and I just don't want you to miss her. I mentioned my cataracts. <laughs> They're just like full. Hey, babe. Over here. Oh. oh. Hey, babe. Okay. What's her name again? I have no idea. We're all at the zoo because of your fiance's patient, and you don't even remember her name. It's a kid. Who cares? Stupid kid name. Yeah, I'm sure her parents forget all the time. If I remember your kid's name is Jonathan, all that means is that before I threw away that stupid, lame ass birth announcement you sent me, I typed the words Jonathan into the address book of my phone book, and I reviewed those notes before I met you out for dinner, which likely is probably only the, what, second dinner we've had in three years due to the fact that you gave birth to little Jonathan in the first place and forgotten all about me and our friendship. Yet, I'm the asshole because I can't remember the name of the person who stole my friend and who doesn't even bother to put down the toy that I gave him to come over and say hi to me when I come over to visit. I don't think so. Have you ever considered therapy? No. <laughs> Oh, okay, all right there, you beautiful young one. Oh my God, is this it? You know it, baby girl. <gasps> Holy shit, it's the banker habitat. That's amazing. I could have sworn. Aren't bankers in danger? It's really fascinating, actually. Apparently, it took years to catch the first few, but once they figured out how to get them to mate in captivity, now all the zoos are starting to feature them. They're kind of scary. Ferocious. And you want to know the most incredible part? After zookeepers tried everything, piles of cash for them to play in, bowls of coke, everything, they're totally immune to porn. Hmm. Turns out all they had to do was start calling the females interns, and little banker babies started shooting out of those habitat boardrooms faster than Lehman Brothers became synonymous with welfare. Man, that's so crazy. It feels kind of cool to be this close to them. It is cool, it's really cool, but it's good we're not any closer. Word is they like to throw their own shit. Poop, throw their own poop. Ladies and gentlemen, as I have said many times before, and as I now will say again, your unemployment forms will not be deemed complete by answering the questions with please see resume attached. Do not ignore this warning if you want anyone in this room to ever leave it. Yo, man, come on. Need one of these? 
more than I ever thought possible. Well, then you're in luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tough crowd. Seriously, you'd think you'd at least get a little sympathy for being unemployed. I guess there really is no such thing as a free lunch, huh? You're not kidding. You should see how much I charge for this pen. How much? It's like 50 bucks a day. Wow. Yeah. Steep. A little steep for people unemployed. Well, I think so. <laughs> attention, attention. Having watched the required Jobs Yes slideshow and having filled in your benefit forms, you are nearly finished with today's mandatory session. The first three hours were so much fun. They were, weren't they? Yeah. Mm. We have randomly selected from the collected forms the names of 10 people who are to participate with one of our employment specialists in an additional 45-minute session. Who knows? Maybe you'll even find that job today. Any questions? Yeah. What bribe gets you to not call my name? Okay. If you are not one of the ten names called, you will be free to go. The Almighty tells me he can get me out of this mess, but he's pretty sure you are fucked. Mr. Edward Hart. Fuck. I want you to know, whatever happens, we'll always have Paris. Miss Barbara Robbins. Casablanca. Nice. <laughs> Mr. Charles Carroll. It's new. Mm, you look really nice tonight. You look really nice too. You look really familiar. I know. <laughs> Can I buy you a drink? Ha! Hey. Oh, hey. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Mm. <laughs> it's my first time here too. Hey there. How you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you? Hey, I love this place. I'm sorry, what's your name again? That's funny. I never touch this stuff. Yeah, I don't eat meat. I don't eat meat. Definitely don't eat meat. I don't drink. I'm a street performer. A lawyer. Into safety work. Kafka. Condiments. Cats. Not all drugs, just some drugs. I mean, I, I get it. That and cocaine. You must be India. Penis and all that. I don't really want to talk to people. Did I say that out loud? I voted for Bush. Twice. What do you mean you don't have a job? God, you sound just like my boyfriend. Leone, party of four! I'm convinced every sane woman in the city is taken. So fucking dramatic. I'm telling you, these women are psycho. Oh my god, they can't all be that bad. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only person in the world who hates small talk. But... Dude, everyone hates small talk, so what? Really? Well, then why do I feel like my head is gonna explode in a hurricane of generic questions? Where are you from? Where do you work? Where did you go to school? You know, the, um... The am I better than you questions. Oh, yeah, well, asking those is how you know you're a New Yorker. How much do you pay for your apartment? How many square feet? What was your broker's fee? I think this place is owned by the same guy that owns Balthazar. Do you ever take a date there? It's not that bad. I'm, I'm sorry, what? 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 <laughs> I, I think it is that bad. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Incomplete parties will not be seated. Okay, okay, Charlie, you know what? I'm your friend, I love you, we all love you, but do you know what your problem is? You. Excuse me? Excuse you. Look, well, you're certainly not the first guy to think he's some big deal for getting a lot of dates in this town. That doesn't mean that you have any idea what you're doing when you're out with these women. Thank you. Look, any guy with an American Express card and a pulse can get a date. There's like half a million more single women than men. It's just that when you're out on these dates, it takes two to tango. That's all I'm saying. I am starving. Should I check with the hostess? This just is face crazy. it, okay? We're never getting it. And here's a new thought for you. I am not the problem. You know, I don't even know why I try. Way to be introspective. Way to be open-minded. I don't even know why I'd expect anything else. Yeah, you're completely wrong. I cannot even believe you think that. <sighs> you know what? Whatever. I'm gonna go talk to the hostess. Okay. okay. 
Beyond that, though, you got an even bigger bugaboo since you're also not having sex. Ugh. Hey, look, you're the one who said he hates small talk. He's got a point, my man. If you're not having sex and you don't have the proper confidence, without that, you're sunk. Oh, so I should just have sex then? Without yes. question. That'll happen easy as pie as soon as you do one simple thing. What's that? I know where you're standing. <laughs> Unbelievable. Don't look at me like that. It's downright insulting to women if you don't try to have sex with them. I mean, she may say no, but at least she gets the pleasure of having had to give you the old eyes. Oh, my God. Look, no one knows why this is. Men are fucking disgusting. How a woman can even be with a man is a miracle to us all. Hetero guys, for sure. I mean, but let's face it, all guys lose their sense of mojo without copulation. Stupid, but true. Bingo, and this is not rocket science. This is man, woman, part, part, plug, and play. You don't think she's very smart? Fine, but she's attractive. Have sex with her. You don't like her politics, her taste issues, her pronunciation of her name, her inability to read, speaking complete, fully formed sentences, loaded dishwasher, past fucking gas, but you think she's kind of nice? Have sex with her. Have sex with her, and if you other chicks just like her, then walk into a date with a woman you actually do like, carrying a brand new mojo, the confident I have sex all the time, motherfucker, so get up on this dick mojo, then have sex with that chick. Hell, maybe even marry her. I don't know, but what I do know? We will all be a lot happier waiting this line next week talking about something other than your fucking lacking sex life. Look, I know this is hard to hear. I get it. I get it. But that's why I'm telling you. We love you. All right? We love you, Charlie. So just listen up. OK, so we're not having brunch, but listen to the advice from this guy. Mm. You give the best advice ever. Mm. Look, Charlie, just be nice to these women, OK? Embrace them for who they are. <laughs> right. Straight out of Sing Sing. Oh! oh. <laughs> hey. Found it! Oh. <laughs> and what's vodka without limes, right? Yeah. Tonics in our light. Oh, I only had soda. I hope that's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's, <laughs> it's just fine. Soda's just fine. Oh, your apartment's nice. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll bet you get really nice light in here hmm. and that you had a low bro broker's fee. Um, Charlie. Are you okay? Fine. Fine. You are just fine. You are just motherfucking fine. Don't be conflicted. Don't be weird. You go in there, you drink your vodka goddamn soda, you take that woman's clothes off, and you get your mojo back. <sighs> oh, hey. Mary, it's kind of dark. I can't really see you. Don't worry, Tiger. I've got you covered. Shake, shake it, make some noise. Boys get your girls and girls get your boys. Take a shot, take a lot, we got more. I'm pouring beats like tequila to keep you moving.
more personal than intercourse to my ass. What makes you so entitled to make that request anyway? Yeah, excuse me, but I am not aroused by triggering my gag reflex. No woman is a fucking sucks. No more crap about semen being good for your hair no. or your skin it's either. Not good for anything except for when it comes out your dick, it's good for and you. Can you believe the son of a bitch ate asparagus last night? Oh my god. Asparagus. You sick Fuck. What? Fuck. What is pineapple juice beneath you? I'm sorry, but I like it. It's delicious and refreshing. Or Doesn't maybe it make you my just enjoy demeaning better? women. I wax my fucking pussy, and you can't wax your fucking dick. No, you can't. You can't wax your Do you dick. Enjoy fucking blowjobs and television. Yeah, sports. you motherfucker. TV. That's all fucking you care about. TV. Nobody cares about your fucking fantasy team. Turn it off and take out the trash and turn it again. Take the trash out. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Do not answers I have this week alone. No, I don't. I don't. Corinne Mackinnon, do not answer. Julia Cunningham, do not answer. Blind date girl, hot coffee chick, internet dates 13 through 37. You want to know what comes up on my phone when they call? Do not do answer. Not answer. Betty. Do not answer. Yeah. About the only phone call I can take these days is from my mom. And all she ever wants to know is when I'm going to get another job. <sighs> Shit, man. Even when you call. All I can ever think about is the happiness that you found with Kathy. Thanks, man. And about how one day, I'll die, having never found that kind of love myself. Okay, we're gonna stop this conversation, but I gotta say, relationships are hard. And one thing I'm not gonna do is sit here and listen to all how easy everybody else has it. And I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. You gotta quit trying so goddamn hard. Treat women like basketball. No more no-look passes through traffic trying to get the easy layup. Let the game come to you. Play good defense, limit your turnovers. I'm gonna get the open look off the broken play. Hit the shot. I'm just. I'm like a one-armed Will Chamberlain out there. Okay, no. You may be right, I'm no expert. Instead of coming up with a solid game plan aimed at victory, it's probably better just to complain instead. <sighs> I'm sorry, man. I know you're right, you know? I just... No, look, I get it, I do. Look, I feel for you. I'm really glad that we had this little talk, but uh, it's okay with you. How about I get married? Sure has been a long time. Well, congratulations. No, oh, thank you. I'm sure they'll have many happy years together. Now, you too. Don't be strangers. Hey, you're not going to get away from us just yet. Not without us first seeing that young lady friend of yours. Oh yes, we haven't seen her tonight. Now, what was her name again, dear? Angela. Angela. That's right. Such nice hair and skin. That's so sweet. Just go. Wait. Now, where can we find her? Okay. Okay. I'm Sorry. sorry. Would you excuse me? Guys, no. You know, no, you have a resting bitch face, but I have something for you. You arrogant punk. I will throw you out of here on your ear. Hey, 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 fellas, fellas, we are at a wedding. A wedding of two people that we love very much, which is why we are going to keep our heads just for one day. Hmm? We're going to have a very nice time, and we're going to enjoy this wonderfully generous open bar. Okay? I'm sorry, sir. Can we please give Mr. Tuck here another drink? There you go. And we're going to apologize. 
Now that's what I'm talking about right there. That's a wonderfully hospitable gesture, wouldn't you say? Adorable. What is wrong with you, Bryce? Boy, you don't think it's adorable? You're a member of the wedding party, for Christ's sake. You can't avoid getting into an all-out brawl by what, your third drink? Fuck her up my chair, what do you want me He's to do? He's in your chair. He's the father of the goddamn bride. All right, well, whatever, he should know better. And just for the record, this is my fourth drink. And you know, you can just try to be like this much less of an asshole. Oh, please. If you want to do this narcissistic shit in your own time, be my guest. But at least try not to do it at your friend's wedding. Mm -hmm. You're one to talk. You don't think your self-involved brooding over every chick you've ever dated since birth is getting old? <laughs> you know what? Fuck you, dude. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, what's with the potty mouth all of a sudden? Yeah, you know what? I do have a potty mouth. And this potty mouth is sick of your shit. My shit? Yeah. Yeah, because you would never cause a scene at a friend's wedding, would you? You're a dick. Christ, dude. You know, your ex didn't waste any time getting her shit back together. What's your problem there? What are you talking about? Give me a break. Like, you don't know Angela got engaged. Carrots are shit. You're a nice guy, man. Okay? A little boring, but Vince likes you, so you can't be that bad, but you gotta get your shit together here. Do us both a favor. Suck on one of those for a little while, okay? And just keep quiet. We've got a nice long night ahead of us. We're just gonna calm down, just shake it off, drink some drinks, smoke some stogies, and crush. Oh, yeah, a little ass. Go on. Good talk. This is yours. I'd like to propose a toast. To my best buddy, Charlie, who, God help us all, is about to give his best man speech. <laughs> <laughs> to Charlie Carroll. You know, when I, I first met Charlie, I thought he was a complete idiot. Then he opened his mouth and proved me right. <laughs> come on, Charlie, come on up here. Charlie! Well, hold on now, Charlie. Where's that young lady friend of yours? Yes, Angela, such a pretty girl. Did I mention my new fiance's got a really big dick? Quite a bit more sizable than yours. Oh, I definitely he? love middle of the night sex with him. Little guy. Sick. I shouldn't even give him a speech. Oh, God, that'd be the perfect way to hear about every chick you've dated since birth. It's probably better to complain. Where do you work? Any man with a pulse Where did you go to school? school? Get a date. Asparagus! Yeah, I don't eat meat. Where do you go to school? Because something's wrong with him. Anybody can see that. Way to be introspective. Right, because you would never cause a scene in a friend of would you? Yeah. You know what your problem is, Charlie? You. Kathy and Vince. Amazing speech you gave. Thank you very much. I wish I could remember it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, I've I've never seen an entire crowd of people in tears like that. And the way you delivered it, like almost catatonic at times, it was it was moving to say the least. Well, here's to what alcoholics refer to as a moment of clarity. You don't, uh, recognize me, do you? It's okay, it'll come to you. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. Holy shit. I thought oh we'd get to it out of you. Yeah, it's okay. You know what, Lorelai, by the way? Charlie, I, I didn't ask for your number that day, and I've been regretting it ever since. Really? I did not see that coming. I swear to God, true story. You, you are so charming. Infinitely better than the jobs. Yes. Oh. Video. That was a good one. <laughs> so please, um, 
accept my apology for my not attempt. It was clearly uncalled for. Well, I mean, now that I've heard the part of your speech where vegetarianism abandoned you, holy cow, by the way, you know, maybe I can let this one slide. Well, I won't make that mistake twice, so, you know, beware. <laughs> Although I, I must say that you're lucky, because a girl not quite as confident as me might worry or wonder why a guy or a gentleman such as yourself didn't ask for her number. She could wonder for a whole 10 minutes, could leave a scar. Oh, scars. Well, that is something that I know a lot about. But to be honest, there was, there's nothing to wonder. You, I, God, I was thrilled with. Me, on the other hand, then, not so much. Mr. Damaged Goods. Ah. Yeah, I should put that on my driver's license. Definitely should. Yeah. The rebound. Yeah, but then, of course, compounded by the job situation. I'm still unemployed, by the way, but I'm sure you can understand. No, actually, I got a job a few months ago. But you get it, so, um. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was getting out of this relationship with this girl, Angela, and I don't know, the thing about Angela, it... The thing about her is, is she's in the past. And I live here, in reality. It's great to see you, by the way. It's great to see you, too. I love this song. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I, do you, you remember do. this song? Yeah. Like how, from back in the day? How could I forget it? I adore this song. It's good. I used to roller skate Shut to this up. song. Shut up. Yeah, totally did. I used to roller skate to this song. Okay. I swear. Yeah. Backward skate. Backward skate only, please. Backward skate. Reverse. Oh, yeah. I remember that. But, you know. I can probably do you one better. Couple skate only, please. Couple skate only. All other skaters, please clear the floor. There's a new sun rising. I can see a new now, I know what you're thinking. But the point here isn't Lorelei turning out to be the one. No, for me that weekend, it was good enough to see some old friends united with their ones. A nice reminder to help get me on my way. Interestingly, however, even though it took some time off relaxing, attaining a finer appreciation for introspection, finding a therapist willing to discard Ibizan philosophies in exchange for more helpful Swedish techniques, and of course, getting over a well-earned case of the clap, I finally got my act together created a bit of my own luck, and face life, at long last, happier. And to me, really, that's the crazy part. Rather than putting on a show to create psychological band-aids, going out of our way to hide our feelings, perhaps we can start by taking comfort in the experiences themselves, both good and bad. The ones that come with loving another person and being lucky enough to be loved in return. Life's valleys especially life's peaks. Feeling them at their fullest and reminding us why it's so great simply being alive in the first place. Living lives filled with love, real love, that we get to feel.
Honoring the rare treasures of those relationships by simply sitting back, being thankful for our lives, and enjoying the ride. At least, I think that's what Oprah says. Hey, give me a hand, buddy. <laughs> oh, okay, come on. Hey. All right. Goodbye, Charles. See ya. Let's see what he left me. And that'll cover the drinks. You know, uh, in America, we're gentlemen. Gentlemen give each other time to speak. So if you just let me finish. Leone, party of four. Leone? Party of four? Leone, Leone? Leone, party of four. Yeah, it's catchy, <laughs> catchy like the clap, all right. <laughs> I have the clap. It's like maybe inviting another girl into the bedroom. Maybe you could watch us. Astronomical. Yeah. Businesswoman. Can someone give me a job? Turn the TV off!
That's because something's wrong with him. Anybody can see that. <sighs> it's because something's wrong with him. Anybody can see that. Excuse me. It's because something's wrong with him. Anybody can see that. Ben? <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> Right, because on this dark street, these two huge thugs with machetes. And nunchucks. And really bad skin. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh. Holy shit. Serious? Yeah, I know. Compromises that uh, mis what the fuck? Like, compromises uh, fuck me. Fuck me hard. <laughs> fuck me so fucking hard. Eternal damnation straight to hell. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> what? Hey, what's back of that line, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you're thirsty. Marking. which meant he knew how to maximize our animalistic impulses, optimally heightening our sexual stimuli. Five orgasms, cinco orgasmos. You look like you've done a lot of drugs. America, okay? America, not Britain. I'm wearing the fucking flag pin. Come on, look, she's fine. I'll let you do that thing to me that you really like. I have, like, a whole lot of lube. Fuck this. Don't pay me enough. Here we go. Oh, my God. This is how I do voiceovers in my house. Five, six, seven. Don't, Don't let motherhood, motherhood slow you down. down. Baby's take and take, but it's your turn now. now. So keep, keep on rolling, rolling in the smoking stroller. So keep on rolling in the smoking stroller. Available at fine stores near you. So keep on, what are you doing? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep doing it. Don't, Don't let motherhood, motherhood slow you down. down. Baby's tick and take, but it's your turn now. now. So keep, keep on rolling in the smoking stroller. That was awesome. <laughs> no. Okay. Don't let motherhood slow you down. Babies take and take, but it's your turn now. So keep on rolling in the smoking stroller. We're in the that pocket was the now. Best one that was now. the best one. Want to do another one? Don't let motherhood slow you down. Babies take and take, but it's your turn now. So keep on rolling in the smoking stroller. That was a jingle, that man. That was a good one. Damn. Do we get it? <laughs> Thank you.
67 donkeys take five. How many donkeys? 67. So like here? A little higher? There. 